Okay, so here's the scenario. You've got 100 bucks until your next payday to feed your family, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Can we do it? <laughs> Today we're at the grocery store to find out if we can meet the challenge. So even though I do like to cook, I'm a super busy working mom and I don't always have time to be making bread and beans and everything from scratch. And so this grocery list is gonna be a little bit more convenience at food based, which I think is the space that most of us are in, right? Most of us are super busy. We have kids, we have jobs, we have a ton of stuff we need to do. We don't have time to be making bread and beans and rice every week. For today's $100 grocery budget challenge, I'm actually partnering up with Earn In, so thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. So paychecks typically come every two weeks, right? But life happens every day, and Earn In is an app that makes sure that your money keeps up with your life. It gives you access to your pay on the day that you earn it instead of days or weeks from now. You can get up to $100 per day, which we know from the groceries that I'm gonna buy and show you all the meals that I make in this video can go a really long way. And best of all, there is no interest, no mandatory fees, and no credit check. Sound too good to be true? I promise it's not, it's super easy. When you sign up, you'll add your bank account and employment info and earn in will verify your paycheck. Transfer up to $100 per day to a linked bank account. It's free and you have the option to tip if you'd like. Any earnings you used plus tips get debited when your paycheck hits, it's pretty amazing. Why wouldn't you wanna just use your own money? The best part is from now until September 30th, earn in is giving all of my subscribers a $10 bonus just for signing up and making your first transfer with my promo code Jen Chapin. All you have to do is click the link in my description box, download the Earn In app. You can sign up, transfer up to $100 of your earnings, and set up a Tip Yourself account in the app to get your $10 reward. Earn In is so easy to use and it's an incredible option to have, so definitely download it right now. I know I have been in plenty of situations throughout my life when I definitely could have used this, and as I said, $100 can go a long way when you have an unexpected expense and your payday is days away. You might need money for groceries, maybe an expense pops up with your kids, and I just really love this service because it's super easy to use, no mandatory fees, no credit checks, no interest. So thank you again to Earnin for sponsoring, and I'll have that link down below. Don't forget to use code Jen Chapin. Okay, I am gonna grab some chips for lunches. So if you've never tried the Great Value brand of chips, they're actually very good and they're way cheaper than the name brand. These big containers of the um, Great Value yogurt are a really good deal, $2.36 for this vanilla, so we're gonna grab one of these. And of course, we need some eggs. $1.48 for English muffins is a great deal, so we're gonna go ahead and grab two packages of these. This just goes to show you how crazy prices have gotten. So I just saw these string cheese. A pack of 18 string cheese is $12. Now I know this is kind of like the more high dollar brand, Organic Valley, but still that is crazy. Anyway, we're gonna grab a pound of this uh, whole milk mozzarella cheese for $3.74. It's a great deal and this cheese is delicious. Nothing wrong with some good old American singles on your ch sandwiches for the week. So I'm gonna grab a package of this. This has 24 uh, singles in it. So for breakfast, I'm gonna get some sausage patties. So these, um, great value that these are just plain sausage patties they're really honestly a great price 276 and you don't have to worry about forming them into patties they're ready to go okay I already told you guys we aren't making our own bread this week so we're gonna grab a loaf of the great value wheat bread for a dollar 32 okay we're gonna grab some chocolate chips to make some muffins Okay, so these soup mixes are a great price. I'm gonna grab one of these uh, chicken noodle ones. Okay, so something that's always really affordable is beans and tomatoes, canned beans and tomatoes. So we're gonna make some chili this week. So I've got crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, and then some uh, store brand Rotel. I'm gonna grab a couple cans of beans as well. So one thing to keep in mind when you're making chili also is that the chili beans are actually the same price as the unflavored beans and so just go ahead and get the flavored chili ones. It's gonna give you more bang for your buck. So my family actually prefers canned green beans to frozen green beans, which is fine with me because they are super affordable. I'm gonna grab some black olives, and in this case, it's worth it to me to slice them myself because I can get more for cheaper, and it obviously doesn't take that long to slice olives. Little known hero of the grocery store, boxed scalloped potatoes. 
don't knock it until you tried it. $1.16 a box, I'm gonna grab two of these. So ground beef is gonna vary pretty widely in price and the lower quality ground beef is gonna be in these tubes, but I got lucky today and I need two pounds of ground beef, so I'm gonna grab this one on sale for $10.91. All right, so I know this is kind of a convenience item, but I still think it's a pretty decent value. I'm gonna grab one of these Parmesan encrusted tilapia for less than 10 bucks. Okay, so let's grab some produce. I'm gonna get some bananas. We're gonna get one green pepper and then one yellow onion. I'm gonna grab a couple of salad kits. Now, I know that you do pay a little bit of a premium for these, but to me, I think it's worth it because everything comes all in one bag and it's super convenient. So I'm gonna get the Asian style one. This one is actually cheaper than some of the others. I'm not sure why. And then let's do the Buffalo Ranch one. We're gonna grab one bag of the Gala apples. These are the cheapest per pound. All right, got everything off my list. Time to check out and see how much we spent. So here's everything that I got at Walmart for under $100. We'll start down here with the produce. I got two of the bagged salad kits, one Asian style and one of the Buffalo Ranch chopped kit. Obviously, you can get whichever ones that you'd like for the price. I grabbed some baby carrots. Um, these are a pretty good deal and it saves me the time of having to peel and chop regular carrots. I got a bag of mixed vegetables. These are only 88 cents at Walmart, so they're a great deal. One onion and one uh, green bell pepper, five bananas, and then I got two packages of the Great Value English muffins. I thought these were a great price, only $1.48 each. Some whole milk mozzarella cheese, we'll be shredding this up for a recipe. Um, some gala apples, just for snacking or yogurt bowls. And then I did get some strawberries also to go with the yogurt. So this is the vanilla, um, low fat yogurt. This will be great with the strawberries and bananas for breakfast. I got one box of the Great Value Elbow Noodles and these are, uh, I think they're 98 cents at Walmart. You can get any shape that you'd like. 18 eggs. I'm glad the eggs have been coming down in price. Uh, a package of pepperoni. This is the cheapest option that Walmart has. Some American cheese and then one eight ounce block of the extra sharp cheddar cheese. If you want the most bang for your buck, you can shred this yourself. It's $2 versus $2.22 for the shredded cheese. And always go with like the sharpest cheddar that you can find, especially if you want extra flavor, you won't have to use as much. I got a bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips, a package of smoked ham, and then I showed you guys in the store, um, I got lucky and found ground beef on sale. This isn't really that much reduced. It's only $1.21 off, but every little bit helps. And then I got a bag of the Parmesan encrusted tilapia. This is a great option for dinner, super quick and usually everyone loves it. I got a bag of tater tots, some sausage for breakfast sandwiches. And then I did pick up a four pack of chunk light tuna. This is less than $4 at Walmart. So that's a great value there. Great value. <laughs> Um, I got some black olives, some green beans. Um, I actually had planned in my budget to get the Bear Creek soup mix, but I saw this and it was basically the same size for like a dollar cheaper. So we'll try this. It is just chicken noodle soup. They had several different flavors. Two boxes of scallop potatoes, and then one box of the Chef Boyardee pizza maker. This makes two 12 inch pizzas, so you get quite a bit. And it includes the crust and pizza sauce, and then all you have to add is your cheese and your toppings. Um, I got one can of a cream of chicken soup. I went with a great value because I um, wanted to make it a little bit cheaper. Some great value Rotel. Two cans of tomato sauce. I got one large can and one smaller can. And then crushed tomatoes, one can of dark red kidney beans, and then I also got the mixed uh, chili beans, two cans of that. Some wheat bread, one loaf of that, and then a bag of barbecue chips. So I was actually pretty impressed with what I was able to get for under $100. And if you guys wanna replicate this uh, shopping list and these recipes, I'll have them uh, linked in the description box below. So I wanna kind of go through what I have uh, planned for meals for the week out of these groceries. 
For breakfast, I decided to do some yogurt bowls. So for this, um, I would use the vanilla yogurt along with the berries and the bananas. I also bought chocolate chips so that I'm able to make chocolate chip muffins. I have the rest of everything on hand, you know, flour, baking powder, milk, things like that. Um, but I would use obviously the eggs and the chocolate chips from the haul to make those. My kids are not gonna ever complain about having chocolate chip muffins <laughs> for breakfast or a yogurt bowl with fruit. They love those as well. And I don't often think of adding banana to my yogurt bowls, but it's actually a great option, especially paired with the strawberry because bananas are a really low cost fruit. And then of course, breakfast sandwiches. So I decided to basically batch prep a bunch of these. And my kids are like, so-so on the breakfast sandwiches. Um, Kira will eat them without cheese. Connor will eat them without sausage. And so obviously you can customize these to whatever your family likes. But what I did was I laid all of my English muffins out on a sheet tray and I toasted them up in the oven. And for my eggs, I put them into a bowl and I just uh, beat them up with some milk and salt and pepper. You could add hot sauce or mustard if you want to. And then I poured them into a nine by 13 dish lined with parchment paper. This actually allows you to bake the eggs in one kind of sheet um, in the oven. And then what you can do is once they're done cooking, you basically cut the sheet of eggs into 12. So you end up with these like little squares of egg and it's a lot faster and easier than cooking each egg individually, I think. And it's like the perfect size to put on a breakfast sandwich. So then I put all these together. I did some with sausage and some with ham. So ham, egg and cheese, sausage, egg and cheese. I was able to make quite a few of these since I had two packs of English muffins. These also freeze really well, so if you don't get them all eaten within the week, you can definitely freeze them and use them later. But I think breakfast sandwiches are uh, it's pretty, I would say pretty easy to meal prep. You know, you obviously can't purchase them pre-made in the grocery store, but they're gonna cost you a little bit more for that convenience. And it really didn't take me too long to put all of these together. And I've got breakfast for my family for the week. Okay, so moving on to lunches. So for lunches, we're basically going to do sandwiches with chips and apples. And then um, I did purchase the tuna, so I was able to make some tuna salad out of that the rest of the ham that I had left over from the breakfast sandwiches. So we could have tuna sandwiches, ham sandwiches, obviously the bag of chips that I bought, those barbecue chips, the great value barbecue chips are actually <laughs> really good. And then I have that whole bag of apples as well, right? So all of those apples are going to be cut up and used for breakfast and lunches um, and maybe even some snacks throughout the week. If you have some peanut butter on hand in your pantry, you can pair that with the apples as well. Um, I also had a few eggs left over so I could make egg salad out of the additional eggs. I've always got mayo in my fridge so it doesn't take too long to hard boil up some eggs. Um, add some mayo, maybe some pickle relish, salt, pepper, mustard, whatever you like to put in your egg salad, and you've got a couple more sandwiches for the week. Um, I also cooked up the bag of chicken noodle soup mix that I got, and this would be a great option to have for lunch along with those bagged salads that I purchased. So typically with the bagged salads, I can get two servings, two like lunch size servings out of each bag. So with the two bags I bought, that would last me and my husband for two days worth of lunches. And then um, for the soup, I would, you know, cook that up, um, either serve it in a bowl if I was eating it at home or put it in a meal prep container and Adam could take it to work. But I think that's like a perfect light lunch, you know, half a bag of that prepared salad, which don't knock the bag salads if you've never tried them. They're really, really delicious, honestly, and they come with everything that you need. I don't think that people necessarily always go to those as like a budget food, but honestly, you are probably going to save a little bit of money by not having to purchase full bottles of dressing and all of the toppings that they come with. So it's definitely a great option, but the bag salad along with the soup, I think is a perfect lunch. I would be happy with that any day of the week. Okay, and then for dinners. So I planned five dinners because my idea with this particular meal plan was say you're doing this on you know a Saturday or Sunday and your next payday is on Friday. So I planned five days worth of meals. So the first thing that I thought I would make with all of the ingredients I got was chili. Chili is a great thing to make because number one, it's super easy. 
Most people like it and you can actually use the leftovers to make even better meals. I think chili tastes better <laughs> leftover anyway. So um, I've showed you guys how to make chili many times on my channel, but normally I just saute ground beef and onion, uh, maybe some bell pepper if I have some. And then I just add a combination of beans and tomatoes, whatever beans you wanna purchase. I showed you guys that I purchased the beans with the chili sauce already in them. That is makes it super easy. You're still gonna have to add extra chili powder and spices that you have in your home. Um, but then whatever kind of tomatoes that you wanna put in, I usually do a combination of crushed tomatoes or tomato sauce along with like Rotel and plain diced tomatoes. Definitely a, a flexible recipe. Um, so we'd have that one night along with some of the shredded cheese. Another thing that I could have picked up that I would have had room for in my budget was a box of the Jiffy cornbread mix. That would have been a great way to use up some of my extra money and then have a little side um, for the chili night. On the second night, what I would do is I would take the chili and I would heat it back up. I would cook the box of macaroni and mix the chili with the macaroni to make a chili mac. If you've never tried this before, it's really, it's really, really good. It's almost like doing like a shortcut hamburger helper, um, but you can make a big pot of this with the leftover chili and the macaroni. It's gonna make it stretch to feed your whole family. Top it with a little bit of shredded cheese. And then I did get some baby carrots, so you could obviously, um, you know, pair that with maybe some baby carrots and whatever ranch dressing that you have in your fridge for a side. Okay, the next dinner that I had planned to cook was tater tot casserole. Now, I love tater tot casserole. I've told you guys about this before. I grew up eating it as a kid, and if you're not from the Midwest, uh, maybe you don't know what it is. Sometimes it's called tater tot hot dish, but basically it's ground beef. So we used half of the package of ground beef for the chili, and we're using the other half for the tater tot casserole. Obviously, chilies and casseroles are a great way to kind of stretch ground beef so that it, you can use less, obviously, to feed your whole family. And that's always a plus for me because I'm basically feeding like four teenagers slash adults now. <laughs> My kids are like teens and preteens and Adam and I, so I definitely have to think of ways I can, can stretch uh, my budget and my proteins in that way. But what I do is I take the ground beef and I saute it in a pan. I season it with, you know, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and then I drain most of the fat from it. After that, you can add in your can of cream of chicken soup. Some people use cream of mushroom. I'm not really a mushroom fan, so I prefer to use cream of chicken. But basically, then you would just add the cream of chicken soup, add a little bit of milk to kind of thin it out a little bit, maybe a little extra onion powder, garlic powder, just taste it to see if it needs more seasoning. And that's really like your base for the casserole. Then what I did was I cooked the frozen bag of mixed vegetables that I got. You could also use canned mixed vegetables, but I find that the frozen ones hold up a little bit better. Some people just use corn, some people just use green beans. I like to use mixed vegetables. Um, stir the vegetables into the hamburger mixture, and I just went ahead and used a skillet that I could transfer right into the oven to bake it. If you don't have one of those, obviously transfer it to a casserole dish, nine by 13 works fine, um, and then you layer uh, American cheese slices over the top. So this part is optional, but I personally think that terra tot casserole needs cheese. And when we were kids, we used Kraft Singles to do this. We never used like cheddar cheese, but obviously you can do use whatever you want. <laughs> but for this meal plan, I used the, um, the American Singles. And then on top of that, you would add your tater tots. So I didn't end up using the whole bag of tater tots. So I had a few left over that you could cook up, um, you know, another night or maybe for breakfast with the breakfast sandwiches. But then you just bake it in the oven at the temperature that it calls for on the tater tot bag. I like to bake it a little bit extra because I like to make sure that the tater tots are nice and crispy on the top. And if you've never had this before, it's just like the quintessential Midwestern comfort food, I think. It's something that I don't have or make very often. I probably make it only like a couple times a year, but when I make it, I'm like, oh dang, this is so good. <laughs> okay, and then the next meal that I had planned with this grocery list was the, um, breaded tilapia that I got from the freezer section. Now this was a pricier item on my grocery list, but I do think that it's worth it, you know, especially 
for us moms that work outside the home or even if we don't and we're just super busy you know you have to think of these things when you're trying to get dinner on the table for your family you can't always make everything from scratch and that's okay don't ever let anyone you know make you feel bad about that um, but what I did for this meal was I cooked up the tilapia in the oven and then the scallop potatoes I made on the side I always buy two boxes of these because my family really likes these potatoes and I find that one box doesn't really stretch um, as much as I would like it to and so I cook these in the oven they are so good again another comfort food I feel like from <laughs> from my childhood but definitely a shortcut that's worth trying out right like who has time to make homemade scalloped potatoes on a weeknight not me um, and then along with this I did the green beans on the side I just cooked those up on the stove um, if I have bacon bits in the in the fridge sometimes I'll add those along with a little bit of butter salt and pepper and you've got a, a delicious uh, well-rounded meal that probably no one in your family is going to complain about and then last but not least is the pizza kit that I bought so this is a super fun idea especially for Friday nights and it is going to cost a lot less than going out and, and ordering a pizza or, or buying a pizza from your local pizza place so this pizza crust kit actually makes two pizzas so you're gonna have plenty for your family and then it comes with the sauce along with that I did purchase the fresh mozzarella cheese. If you can shred it up yourself, it's gonna taste a lot better than the bagged stuff. If you wanna buy the bagged stuff, no worries, but I found it a cheaper price just to get the whole pound and shred it myself. And then for toppings, I got some pepperoni. Um, I got those olives and then also whatever I had left from the green pepper. So for this, I'd probably make one, you know, pepperoni pizza for my kids and then maybe like a supreme type pizza for Adam and I that had like, um, you know the peppers and the olives and the the pepperoni on it and this is even something that you can obviously get your kids involved in as well my kids loving help love helping make pizza in fact Connor <laughs> uh, always asks if we could make pizza dough and and cook it that way so they have a really fun time um, doing that but those were the meals that I had planned from this grocery list. So I think that this um, list is really approachable and it definitely gives your family, you know, plenty of food for the week without having to make everything from scratch. I have created meal plans in the past, you know, where I have like cooked beans from scratch and big pots of rice and, you know, homemade bread and, and things like that. But the reality is, is that especially if we're on a tight budget, we're probably tight on time. We don't always have time to do all of that stuff, right? And so I hope that this uh, meal plan and this grocery list can help you out in some way. And again, if you want to download that uh, or access the recipes, that will be in the description box below. Once again, thank you to Earn In for sponsoring today's video. If you guys wanna check them out, you can get up to $100 before your next payday. I'll have that link in the description box below. And don't forget to use my code, Jen Chapin. Thanks for watching. And if you guys wanna see the latest Instagram Instant Pot video that I posted. There are some awesome recipes in there, so make sure you check that out. I'll link it on the screen right here.